This is Excavator Lieber 902 Pack by Black Sheep Modding on Farming Simulator 22. It's for all platforms, PC, Mac, and console. I'm on PS5 here on the crawl map for this test and demonstration of this pretty large pack of two excavators and a, a, a wide variety of attachments. So, what we're first going to do is tell you the megabytes, 29.09 megabytes to download. The excavators are eight slots each to um, on console, and the um, the attachments are quite quite reasonable at one and two slots each. So it's not going to kill you if you're on one of the older consoles. Now, we're going to take a look. We're going to turn that on. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the excavators, and you'll find it under uh, vehicles and miscellaneous. And here they both are. Uh, we have a track version and a wheeled version. Uh, the Lieber R902, $99,500, 250 horsepower uh, rated. CVT transmission, 300 liters of fuel, 6 miles per hour um, traveling speed. Uh, hopping over to the wheeled version, the 902, uh, it's a little cheaper at $90,000, a little less horsepower, 234 horsepower CVT transmission 300 liters of fuel and 15 miles per hour so a little bit quicker along the ground let's take a look at the um, track version first and we don't have an extensive amount of configurations which is nice we have design we have standard or forestry and then we have beacons type 1 2 3 4 5 and 1 so uh, whatever style you like in beacons are all orange Color, we have color options of uh, the yellow. We have communal. Uh, green. Well, it's odd that uh, the orange kind of looks yellow on the top in the light, bright light. But it's, it's all one color because we can see that in the green. Yeah, that's how the lighting works. Green, we have green, green, and then black, and then another black. Uh, rim color, we have all the same, uh, oh, although we do have a black first, and then communal, green, green, gray, and a black. Uh, prices, uh, as you can see there, is, uh, well, the price is charging you for those color changes. Moving on over to the wheeled version, we have a couple more options because of the wheels. We have Trelleborg, and in Trelleborg we have a standard a uh, narrow as it's said here but more of a road tire and then wide and then back to standard which is pretty nice i kind of like that then we have communal in nokian <clears throat> and then well those are the two tire options basically we have the forestry and not uh, we also have the additional option to add a front support uh, whether you if you that if that's what you prefer or not i have one with and again, the five types of beacons, also the main colors, as you can see here there, and then rim color, like so. Pretty standard stuff and a license plate, if you so choose. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to look at the accessories. Tools and miscellaneous are where they all are. We have an earth moving bucket, 2000 liters. A multi fruit type bucket with uh, with the same color options there. The cleaning bucket, uh, four thousand liters, no options. The greater blade, three meters wide. We have a beat grapple that has a option. We have a um, brush and log fork this style, and we have a brush and log fork. This style, we're going to take a look at those um, a lot closer. We're just going over the accessories right now. Uh, we have an HR46, which is a tree harvester head. And then we have a uh, forestry grinder. And finally, lot least but not least, hmm, last but not least, a pallet fork, which is interesting uh, to say the least. Right, so the first thing we're going to look at is the buckets. I have them attached already, so let me go set that up, and we'll uh, test them out. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is the two models just by themselves, because there are, aside from the tracks, 
there are a couple of significant differences between the two models. So let's first take a look at the tracked version. Uh, inside, we have inside, we have a look at the, the bucket and let's start it up. And it's fixed, so it uh, basically follows the the, uh, the end of the um, arm. All right, so basic stuff uh, backing up, going forward. I I don't know if it's just me. It does seem like it's going fat. Oh, maybe not. It's yeah the. The, the travel speed and the track movement seems just a tad off for me. I'm not sure if that's maybe just an optical illusion. Maybe my eyes are going buggy, but anyways, um, just a side thing that's nothing really significant. It does leave nice tracks. <laughs> right, okay, so operationally speaking, L1 and right stick left and right, and up and down moves the, uh, the, the whole arm. We have lights, we have good lights, we have a horn, meh, nothing, nothing too crazy there. Um, so L1 and right stick, up and down, left and right, good. R1, right stick, left and right, moves your um, attachment um, adjustment and up and down moves that. So pretty standard stuff as far as that goes. Um, L1 and R1, there's nothing. So we have control group crane one. That's all the stuff we have. That's the default where you start with. If you press your triangle, we get control group side door. And then if we come down here, L1 and right stick up and down, you can open and close your side door. Looking inside again, uh, we have mirrors, but it looks like it's staring at the ground. That's just the one mirror. And then we have the mirror behind us. Um, Foot pedals um, look cool. Let's see here. Control group two, we move. Yeah, the joysticks don't move though. So if you're looking for that um, immersive in-cab experience, it's uh, kind of there, but the joysticks aren't moving when you're moving stuff around. So not quite that, if that's what you're looking for. I never go in-cab. I'm always up here looking at what I'm doing. So. Um, it, it's neither here there nor there for me. Let's turn that off and hop out <clears throat> and go over to the wheeled version. Now this one's similar in a lot of ways with, uh, we'll start it up. Engine sound are uh, pretty standard. We have a steering wheel in this one, obviously, because of the wheels. Um, and the gauges seem to work quite nicely, um, but um, again, no joystick movement if that's what you're looking for. Uh, again, we have the three views. Now, what's different about this? Uh, in Control Group One, uh, all the all the um, movements are the same as we were in the other one. Then we go to control group side door, that's also the same. But then we have one additional control group, control group three, support leg, L1 and right stick up, puts that down and gets you nice and solid on there if you're doing some work, uh, stationary work that you want to do. And, oh, okay. Right, okay, don't do that. It seems like it's kind of moves around a little bit, maybe? Yeah, it seems pretty solid. Right, so, um, personally, the uh, having all those control groups kind of gets a little bit messy um, for me, but that's just me. All right, now, <clears throat> um, the first things we're going to try out are these buckets. So let's hop into this one. And actually, I'm, I've, after this, I'm going to be using the wheeled version just because it gets around quite a bit better and faster than uh, than this fellow does. But um, 
there we go that's how you attach so when you're attaching the buckets you want to make sure the buckets facing the excavator when you're attaching so that everything lines up <clears throat> moving forward here again we see uh, top left corner there what what do we have highlighted well you want the if you highlight the bucket you're not going to be able to move anything you have to make sure that you go to control group crane one that's where you'll be able to maneuver your bucket and let's see if we can pick some stuff up here and let's go da, 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 there so we have picked up our rocks we're gonna move over to our trailer see if we can do this without causing too much trouble there we go we have positioned ourselves and there we go dumping it into the truck so that bucket seems to work quite nicely and it works well no uh, other than the usual you know challenges when working with these kind of things um, yeah onto the wheeled version with the larger bucket and again you want to make sure that the uh, there we go you want to make sure that your um, your end there is oriented roughly to accept or be compatible with how it's oriented on the ground there and there we go attach it <clears throat> and then uh, let's uh, let's make sure we got control group one crane or crane one and let's extend that out there let's uh, there we go let's get that filled up There we go, now it's full, and whoop, nope. Uh, I am a terrible crane operator, by the way. And we're a little stuck there, there we go. <clears throat> All right. Emptying is just basically opening up and dumping out. Right, so, right, we have a few more attachments to go, and there we go, so we have to highlight the attachment, the bucket, and press X and it will release there we go we have been released and uh, on to our next accessory next attachment we're going to look at is this it's the grading grader blade three meters working width 1.4 tons there it is so if you want this to hook up to your machine you can't have that front support on there it won't hook up you have to have it empty like this or um or like this i actually didn't try attaching it to this <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do that it uh it did attach to the to this one let's move it out of the way we are going to demonstrate it well here i'll show you with this one we just move forward like that and that's how it attaches there so let's move back <clears throat> excuse me and make sure it attaches to this and then we'll show you how it operates let's see here does this yes there we go okay so that's kind of neat <clears throat> it actually um, <clears throat> attaches like that so L1 and R1 left stick left and right moves that blade up and down now it's I'm I'm thinking this is more for moving logs around maybe and stuff i mean it works as a it doesn't really clean right down to the it kind of leaves it's about as close as to a greater blade as i think it's more like a leveler that's what it looks like how it works so let's lift it up a little bit and yeah so that's the greater blade on to the next attachment next attachment we're going to look at is the beat grapple which we have here and it's a little bit of an odd looking beast but don't worry about that we'll show you how it all works 
First of all, we'll find it in tools and miscellaneous where, where everything else is, and there it is, $3,000, 3,500 liters. Now it shows everything there. However, we have a standard, and then we have a bulk discharge grapple option. So right now we have this one, and what that is is actually beets and, and potatoes. Like I think it could be only beets only actually because well we'll show you that so how do you hook it up so here it is on the ground that's how you get it now um <clears throat> it hooks up to the standard um standard you don't have to change anything on your machine notice that i have it oriented here in this flat to the ground type of position and all you have to do is drive up to it and make sure it's centered over that in there and there we go see that attach bam it's attached now notice it's um the the end is lit up again you have to go to control group crane one again and as i show you over here we have rocks here but it's not doing anything with the rocks and that's because well we have the the standard version and if we go over here to a pile of beets that I have there and we uh, lower it down it should uh, let's see here let's uh, there we go let's close it there we go now you close it a little bit and it and it starts to close it a little bit and then now it's so it doesn't um, I'm gonna say it's um, it's not how it doesn't work how you kind of would expect a typical type of thing like this to work we can spin it around L1 and R1 left and right spins it around so it has yeah you can do that and then if you open it all the way that's when it dumps it so you want to close it a little bit lower it down and it will basically fill itself up and then you can close it all the way and then L1 and R1 right stick down and empty it out so if uh, if you wanted just to pick up everything then we're just gonna scoot it over here to the workshop and go down here and just go to everything and then let's go ahead and pick it up again and i will there we go now notice i'm trying to lift up the it's like as soon as you hook it up you got to go back to control group crane i know it's annoying i find it annoying it is annoying but that's how it works let's go over to the rocks and same thing here now that it's configured let's just um close it up a little bit and as you can see it kind of like just picks up the rocks right away close it lift it up open it up all the way there we go dump it out so there you go that's the um, beat I think it's beat grapple yeah beat grapple and there we go now we can unattach it and then it's back to normal shall we say okay on to the next attachment all right the next two we're going to look at are actually these bush and um log grab um what are they called <laughs> i just looked at it bush and log forks so we have two styles here we have this one the standard attachment style and then we have this one which we just seen before with that type of attachment style and that's thirty five hundred dollars that's twenty eight hundred dollars so this is how you get them I just bought them in the store like that and uh, so you I'm a I'm looking at this I if you approach it from this direction lower your and hopefully it doesn't fly off into the okay right so it's actually the other way but it's okay now we go to control group crane again and lift it up right so if we set that down let's just detach that and if we come over here woo okay so it's a little bit mm, 
a little bit tricky but as you can see this one has that style so it's um all right l1 right stick left and right that's that's all that's the crane r1 l1 and r1 this is where you spin it and grab it like so and if we drop that and go ahead and attach this one this is going to be much the same although um, there we go <clears throat> it's just grabbing you see that you don't you don't have uh, oh you spin and grab too okay so <laughs> it's just not wobbly so what I'm going to do now is actually going to go cut a tree down and uh, we're going to grab, pick up a tree and see how it acts or pick up some logs and see how it acts with these. So here we have a log and I'm going to attempt to uh, pick it up and hopefully, yeah, all right. Seems to work well. And opening it up. Right. Okay. That actually works pretty good. Let's drop that. Oops. And let it fall on the ground. Now, word of caution if you have all of these attachments all very close together, I did initially have my game crash um, when I bumped into them. So. Yeah, just if you have them all in one spot, just be really careful not to get too close, to have them all together, kind of spread them out. I would very much recommend that um, if you don't want your game to crash. There we go. So that looks like it. So notice this kind of has swings around. It's not, it's not fixed like the other one, but it has all the same basic operations as the other one right so let's just drop that and uh, yeah so there's the grapple let's move on to the next one right so the next item we're gonna look at is the harvester head and we're going to find it in tools miscellaneous as well they're all here there it is ten thousand dollars we have our color choices like we've seen before Pretty standard stuff there. It doesn't say the size of tree, so I tried it on a smaller one. We're going to try it on this one. This one's here just on the map. So, same with the other uh, other attachments. You just drive forward like that. You should be able to get that attach going there. L1 and turn on the harvester head. But then if you want to move it around, make sure you have the control group crane 1 there you can move it up and down so we're going to so the harvester head is turned on we're going to line it up with this tree here and there we go whoop not too close l1 and x cut there we go it's kind of grabbed it oh it's pretty big but let's uh move it off to the side i have it set for four meters l1 and triangle let's say five liter uh, meters and see what it does l1 and x cut it should debranch it and cut it into four meter lengths and as you can see it's doing a fine job indeed very nice right so what else can you do with it l1 r1 right stick left and up and down L1 and R1 you can spin it back and forth and you can tilt it so if you have if you have cut links on the ground you'd want to orient it like that and if you want to debranch it and um, and cut it to links that way you can so there we go off to the next attachment attachment is this it's the stump grinder and there it is forestry grinder sorry 95 or yeah 9500 dollars now that's not how you get it that's i detached it and that's how it kind of fell so let's see if we can get this thing to recognize it there we go so uh let's control group group crane again let's lift it up so that's 
how you want to orient it uh, instead of so you want the stump grinder facing away otherwise you might get a little bit of like mm. um, so you have the the same L1 and R1 we have the adjustments like this you can spin it around L1 is basically your so basic crane operations let's turn it on and see how well it works actually uh, there we go oh it works really good it was pretty much instantaneous so that's pretty nice at least that was on the uh, that stump that I I planted a tree so um, as far as stumps go yeah you there it's a little bit hit and miss let's drop this okay there we go you want to kind of that's how you get it standing up like that so you just gotta make sure you drop it nicely so the next one we're gonna try out is this the pallet fork and um, let me get up uh, get a couple of pallets and see how this works as I said this is the next one the last but not least the pallet fork so again we're just gonna quickly show you where that's found there it is six hundred dollars just the color options now this one you have to well I have to you should want to pick it up with the forks facing out otherwise you might have a little bit of a mishap there you go attach it like so so again control group group crane and you have the full um, movement that you would have with any attachment now this is an interesting attachment for a for a uh, excavator um, but I can see where it could be handy L1 and R1 now we have L1 and R1 is your where you can adjust your uh, width of your forks now let's orient this down a little bit I have a pallet of liquid fertilizer here and as we lift it up it's a little bit wiggly um, but it seems to be that the pallet isn't going crazy and and you can actually lift it up uh, quite high so if you have some high spots or high places you want to store pallets uh, let's see if we can get it on the roof here and it's gonna be difficult getting it off but there we go we've put it up on the roof <laughs> and uh, so that actually works uh, pretty well it's just getting used to the controls I guess um, but that's uh, me that's the uh, that's the kind of relationship me and cranes have or excavators of this with these kinds of controls it is a uh, it is a rocky relationship to say the least but there you go I think that's uh, all covers everything uh, there is a uh, one note on the description platinum expansion compatible so sounds like it's compatible with uh, the attachments from the platinum expansion dlc if you have those as well but uh, this is the complete package here everything seems to work well and it works well together with the um, excavators and what they do what they should do so there you have it excavator Lieber 902 pack by black sheep modding on farming simulator 22 thank you all for watching and remember it's only a game so till the next one bye for now Thank you.